Hello, this is John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata, and welcome to another MetPy Monday. On this week's MetPy Monday, I wanted to talk to you about some functionality that we're moving out of MetPy into our Siphon package. The purpose of Siphon is to help you retrieve remote data. And currently, when you're getting upper air data, you can retrieve it from either the Wyoming or Iowa State archives, but that functionality lives in MetPy in a function called get upper air data. Okay, so I wanted to start out by showing you how this works. If you try to use get upper air data from metpy.io right now, you'll see a deprecation warning come up. It'll be a red box if you're in a notebook or just some text in your terminal, if you're running a script or working in the interactive shell that says, as of metpy 0.6, this function has been deprecated and moved to siphon. When we get to metpy 0.8, it will be completely removed from MetPy. So I'm gonna show you how to get data using Siphon now. This is something that we're excited to do is expand Siphon's capabilities into getting data from more and more sources to make it easier for you to get data into Python and start working with it to do your science. So the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna to need to be able to tell Siphon, just like we did MetPy, when we want data from. And for that, we're going to use the datetime object from the datetime module. So from date time, import date time. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make variables for the date and the station. You could do this all in one call, but I wanna split it out since this is a new interface when I'm introducing it to you here. So I'm going to make a date time object. In this case, it's going to be September 10th of 2017 at zero Z. And then the station is going to be Key West, Florida. This is right before Hurricane Irma was there. Okay, so now we're ready to import from Siphon and do our request. So in Siphon, we added a simple web service module that has utilities to help us talk to RESTful type web services, which Wyoming is one of. So from siphon dot simple web service dot Wyoming, we're going to import the method Wyoming upper air. And now I'm going to go ahead and request data. I'm going to use DF, which you'll see why in just a second, equals Wyoming upper air. Remember tab completion is your friend dot request data from the date and the station. Then I run that cell. Now I've got my data. If I look at what DF is, you'll see in the notebook, we get this really nicely formatted table. I can scroll around it and even has some highlighting going on. It's truncated itself so it doesn't keep scrolling down the screen. This is a pandas data frame. In MetPy, you would get something that looked like a net CDF file back when you requested this data. As we move to Siphon, we've transitioned that to be a pandas data frame as pandas is a wonderful way to work with a lot of data and do all kinds of manipulations and joins and some database like operations on it. So for example, on one project that I've worked on, I've had thousands of soundings in a single pandas data frame and was able to go in and pull out the date range or certain stations, make all kinds of queries against that large data frame that I've downloaded and put all of this data in. We'll talk more in future MetPy Mondays about how to work with pandas as we expand its usage in our data model. One interesting thing that we've done here is we've tagged on a units attribute to the pandas data frame. So if we look at df.units, you can see that for each column name, it's a key in a dictionary, and the value in that dictionary is what unit that is in. So degrees Celsius, degrees, meters, hectopascals, knots, etc. This makes working with it and assigning units an automated process. Let's say that you can use the same script to get data from somewhere that provides sounding temperatures in degrees Celsius versus somewhere that provides sounding temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit or in Kelvin. And as a reminder, how to get something out of a dictionary here. Let's say I wanted to know the units for dew point. 
So I'm going to use a bracket and then the key, do point. You see, I get the string degree Celsius back. So I'm going to go ahead and import our units registry from MetPy. So for MetPy.units, import units. We've had a couple of MetPy Monday videos on units. So if you need a quick refresher, that's something good to go look at. And now we need to actually go ahead and assign these units to the values in the pandas data frame and get it ready to work with because we're going to next talk about plotting skew t's and hodographs and how to work with this data once we get it in python here again is where not everything in the python ecosystem is quite ready for units and pandas data frames or the individual columns data series are not actually quite ready to have units attached to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull things out into individual variables. So P, T, T, D, U, and V, which is how we've traditionally done it with the NetCDF like data model. Anyway, if you look at the MetPy examples, P equals my data frame, the column name, which is pressure. And I have to use dot values here because I want just the numbers. I don't want a whole data series. Uh, object back from pandas. I just want an array of the numbers. I need to multiply it by the proper units. So our units registry. And here, sure, we could say HPA. But that's not very robust. What if we got it from a different source that had different units? So what we're instead going to do is instead of hard coding those units in, we're going to use them out of that units attribute, that dictionary that's attached to the data frame. So df.units pressure. And when I run that, look at p now, you see that I've got an array of the pressures that have the units hectopascal attached. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up here and fill in temperature, dew point, and u and v winds. Okay, so now I've got pressure, temperature, dew point, and U and V winds pulled out, and I'm ready to work with them. You notice I didn't pull out things like the height or the wind direction and wind speed, because for now I'm not going to need them. I can always go back and pull them out later. But these are the basic five variables that we're going to need to plot our skew T next week. I hope that you've seen that working with Siphon to download this data as a pandas data frame is really a pretty nice process and something that's going to allow us to expand our remote data access in the future and make data access easier for you. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to contact us or follow us on social media at MetPy and at Unidata. Thank you for joining me on this week's MetPy Monday.